Hey guys, welcome once again back to the channel. So today we're going to go ahead and do head studs on an LOI 2005 Duramax, but this is going to correlate for it pretty much every single generation of Duramax motor, and it's going to be very helpful. So today we have the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan here, which is the owner at Ryan's Diesel Service, who is allowing me to actually take my camera and document this footage to share with you guys here in the diesel community. Glad to have you come down and have some awesome uh, coverage here for your viewers. Logan is one of his technicians here and he does a lot of work with Duramaxes, Cummins, Power Strokes. These guys do a lot of performance heavy repairs. So make sure you guys check them out. They're here in North Prairie, Wisconsin. Another little information I'd like to drop here is make sure you check out Rust Belt Mechanics video. He also did a head stud video and at this point he removed the cab. Now in my case we are not removing the cab on this one. I think it's going to be a raw down and dirty most of you guys that are watching this video right here are probably doing it in your garage and you want to learn it. So it's more going to be realistic and down home to you. But if you guys want to take a more cleaner version of this video right here, make sure you check out Rust Belt Mechanic. One more thing I want to point out to you guys is we will not be documenting a lot of the driver's side. We'll be doing a lot of the passenger side because a lot of that stuff correlates. Is that correct, Ryan? Absolutely. You bet you. Pretty much identical side to side. Great. Awesome. Okay. Other than that, guys. Sit back and enjoy, and hopefully we can learn something. Stay tuned. Hey guys, we got a 2005 GMC 3500 that's here. Got head gasket issues. Uh, basically, kind of the concern that the customer had. The coolant tank was black and was losing coolant. He could only make it about 100 to 200 miles. Coolant would start just pouring out of the overflow tank. We did run, did run a couple other tests. Um, visually, just first pop in the hood, we could see the upper radiator hose. This hose is like rock hard. You can kind of see it's very hard to squeeze it. Like you say, coolant tank being black, excessive pressure when we take the cap off. So it's one of those things, um, like you say, plus with the other test we ran, it's gonna need head gaskets. So uh, we're gonna jump into it and start getting it tore apart. Go ahead and remove this resonator box. Also loosen it up with a little eight millimeter socket, this little clamp right here. Pulls right off the turbo mouthpiece right here. So go ahead and remove the resonator. One thing we're gonna do is pull the overflow cap off. The big thing here is there's a ton of excessive pressure on there. So you gotta carefully do that. Otherwise you are gonna get one heck of a bath. And one thing that I normally do is I'll take this cap, slowly start taking it off. Um, you'll hear it'll start hissing. You'll see it start rising in the tank. The other thing that from times what I've started doing is I'll actually take the cap and rock it back and forth. You can hear there, you can actually see, you can actually see it's actually coming out of the overflow right now, all that pressure. So I'll actually put the cap back on just a touch, just to blow the rest of the pressure off. Kind of rock the cap back and forth. And there it's off. Like you say, if you were to just go and take the cap off on normal, all that coolant, instead of going out the tube, would have just blown right off the top and would have went all over the bottom of the hood and all over you. So at this point, we can go ahead and start draining the actual cooling system out. If you guys do get down there, by chance there is no pet cock, go ahead and just remove the lower radiator hose and just let it all leak out from there. Next we're gonna do is charge pipes, uh, both drivers and passenger side. Um, if you haven't already at this point, you're gonna pull your wheel well liners out, both passenger and driver, just to make things a little bit easier. Pull your fan shroud out, uh, upper radiator hose will start getting the front of the motor exposed. So next we're just removing the cold side charge pipe right here. It's 11 millimeter guys, just make sure you guys use like a deep socket. It's connected right here to the compressor housing of the turbo and then it's ducked all the way down to the intercooler. All right guys, next we're gonna do is remove the fan shroud and the TCM. Your TCM is gonna be over here. You're gonna have two connections. Uh, basically what Logan's gonna do is he's gonna go and get the push tabs pulled out. You also have across the top four bolts, 10 millimeters that are holding in that shroud. Uh, basically, uh, you'll see here, he's gonna take that one out. TCM is right here. Then we're gonna pull the TCM out. Uh, right here, you're gonna see, you're gonna have a gray and red connections. Um, you will push on here, pull out, push and pull. That'll disconnect your TCM right completely from there. To get the fan clutch off, we actually have a tool that goes on our uh, air chisel. However, some parts stores do rent these out, uh, this wrench out. Uh, it's a 48 millimeters, the size that you need. Um, what you can do is actually go down on the nut, take the actual belt, pull back on it so that the fan isn't gonna actually turn. 
and then you're gonna actually go and push this way uh, so that you can loosen that up and take the clutch right out. Um, in some cases, this does turn into a two-man job, so have a little patience, but you'll be able to walk it right on off. As you can see, that makes life a lot easier. Um, biggest thing we'll stress too is make sure when you're spinning this off, do not let it go under the radiator. That turns into a really expensive day. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and just remove that 17 belt, use a half inch, put it right in the uh, belt tensioner. Go ahead and remove that belt. We'll go ahead and remove the AC compressor. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna take that, those two electrical plugs out, and then what we'll end up doing is actually switch, flipping it over to the passenger side battery. All right, so next we're pretty much just peeling back the entire engine harness here, uh, going from the accumulator all the way through. And it all, it all ducks right through here. So pretty up front, guys, we're just peeling back. One thing to note here, too, is the prime example. There's one thing while you're just doing this, just take a quick peek quick. Make sure these wires look good. We don't have any bare spots or anything. Um, this can create a lot of issues down the road. Next then too, at the same time, we're gonna take the uh, hot power off the back of the alternator. We'll also take the junction block. We'll take this 10 mil, that's a 10 mil at the same time. We'll drop both of those out of the way. The important thing just to note here, uh, when you're getting these electric bail connectors out, make sure you guys squeeze here. Um, otherwise, if you don't, you just try to force it. Uh, in some cases, you'll break the clips off, you'll break these tabs off. Uh, so just make sure you squeeze, lift up, and the plug will pop out, like so. Back here too, you also have your hot. Um, that's going to be tied in with these factory controllers. This is the hot that feeds your glow plug controller. Uh, so at this point too, you'll also have to disconnect that. You can go and disconnect now, let's like say take these bolts out for uh, the upper thermostat housing pipe here. Um, Note it too back here on this, normally we'd pull this clamp off, in this case we're just going to take a side cutter to cut this hose. The reason being is visually looking at this, it may be hard to see, that hose is actually like twice the diameter it should be. That hose needs to be replaced, so instead of wasting the time sitting there trying to get it off, everything like that, we're just going to take a side cutter, cut it, and uh, then we'll replace the hose uh, once we start putting it back together. Sometimes these things can be kind of a pain to get uh, out of here. Um, every once in a while I find where you may have to take like a flat blade screwdriver and kind of stick it down in there. Just kind of finesse it to get it to wiggle out. You can walk it right out. Oh yeah, and on top of it, you can tell somebody must have been trying to chase something because they put, uh, <laughs> that actually looks like the GMS uh, sealant, the GM sealant in the gray little tubes. Looks like somebody must have put that around because that's definitely silicone. That should not be in there. So. Uh, it'll definitely be one thing that we'll clean up uh, once we start uh, cleaning and prepping everything. I'm sure uh, yeah, that bore is packed full too. So we'll clean up our thermostat housing bore, clean this bore out, uh, actually just put just an O-ring on there like it belongs and kind of go from there. Now you can kind of see too, there's a perfect picture. You can see how blown out that hose actually was. Uh, like I say, that about twice the diameter of what it should have been. Um, so like I say, this will definitely be one thing we'll make sure we get that hose replaced. Kind of slide the harness out of the way. Um, like I say, you don't want to bend too far because like I say, uh, fear you can have is again with miles, these wires being brittle. Um, you don't want to be breaking stuff, breaking wires and causing yourself more headache once you get back on them. On these here too, you're going to have four total uh, that are going to be down on your EGR and then you'll have two into your Y bridge.
Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the pickum. Now, there is a little slide tab right here, as you guys can see. He's just pushing down on it. It's gotta slide over. These can be pretty stubborn, though, because um, it's, it's just plastic, and it's been on there for a very long time. You just go ahead and pull back on that tab, just like that, and uh, pull it out. That's it. We'll do that for the other one. Now, this is a fuel line that's routed to your fuel filter housing. There's gonna be three 14 millimeter bolts you're gonna to have to remove on this. Um, one here, one here, and then there's one right, right there where my finger is. We're gonna go ahead and remove those bolts right now. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the fuel filter housing. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the lines, and then I know we're gonna have some 13 millimeter bolts on the top. We're gonna to go ahead and remove right now. Coolant tube has to come off in order to remove the fuel filter housing. Um, so right now we're on the bottom here. We'll go ahead and remove that 13 millimeter nut. Okay, so once you've removed those clamps, of course you're gonna go ahead and just disconnect these fuel lines. Just work with them, go ahead and pop them off like that. Give us plenty of access to remove that. Go ahead and remove the bracket that holds the pickup on. There's going to be four 12 millimeter bolts, and there's also going to be one here on the side that's actually connected to the oil dipstick tube. So let's go ahead and remove those bolts. Once we've removed those two, those three 10 millimeter nuts up here on the top, we're going to go ahead and remove the injector glow plug. Uh, wiring connectors right here once we do that this should free us up to be able to peel back this entire wiring harness on the passenger side okay, guys so next we're going to pop off the fuel lines uh, in order to do that you're just going to come up here pop underneath flat blade screwdriver whatever you may have um, grab it pull forward uh, this line is going to be half inch this line is going to be three eighths um, we'll go take your tool slide it down in there Three-eighths off, pull it out of the bracket, and our fuel lines are disconnected. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the PCV hose right here, which is connected to your mouthpiece. Of course, it's routed all the way up here as well to the other valve cover here. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove that. It's going to all come out as one piece with the mouthpiece that's connected to the turbo. So that's what we're working on right now. Next we're going to do is pull this power steering line here. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because it is going to the actual pump here. Um, it's going to be pulled too tight to try to slide this accessory bracket off. We can leave the pump to the accessory bracket, um, but like I say, in order to do so, we got to drop this line off. So Logan's going to go ahead and pop this line off. Um, to catch access fluid, we just got a water bottle here. We're just going to stick the line in there. Um, that way it's not leaking everywhere. And uh, like I say, uh, slide it off the front. All right, guys, uh, getting this uh, accessory bracket off, you're gonna have two 14 millimeter nuts, 14 millimeter bolt, 14 millimeter bolt down here. You pull these out, pull the two nuts off, slide the bracket off. That's gonna then expose your coolant crossover um, and then have the two nuts, two bolts here to get that whole assembly pulled right out. We're gonna go ahead and remove that turbo mouthpiece at this time. It's an eight millimeter clamp. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the coolant tube that's connected to the thermostat housing. Okay, so next step, we're gonna go ahead and remove the EGR valve as well as the cooler, which is attached right here. It's all gonna come out in one unit. In this particular case, there's four bolts. This is an LOI motor on the back of the up pipe that routes to the turbo. So you're gonna have to remove all four nuts from the back of that, and it, it's really tough, especially with a cab on. Um, a lot of different techniques. Now there's a few ways that you guys can attack this. Now Logan, of course, he's got the ratchet, and it's a uh, 3 8 ratchet with a 12 millimeter and an extension. Uh, that extension does come in handy as well um, because it's gonna give you a little more clearance so you're not too close to the up pipe. And then I, I know at the very end of his ratchet right here, it's probably touching the heat shield on the turbo, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Every time you flap down. So there's not a whole lot of access, and you're really going to have to muscle through those in order to get that out. 
Luckily, this motor had to have been pulled apart in the past, but it did come off pretty easily. But in your case, it's probably not gonna be as easy. I would recommend a ratchet strap, as crazy as that sounds, an open-ended wrench and a ratchet strap. You see what you can do here is you can actually hook the ratchet strap here um, and then bring it right through the firewall and then hook it to the open-ended wrench and then ratchet strap here. Very dangerous, so be very careful. Actually don't even recommend this whatsoever. I've done it in the past, it's worked great. But if you can muscle those that way, the way Logan's doing it right now, that's probably gonna be your best bet. So if you go ahead and look at the firewall here, you're gonna have a hose, coolant hose right here routed there. Go ahead and disconnect here. Um, you're gonna remove these two bolts right here, right in front of the EGR valve, and this whole unit should just come right out. It's actually what it looks like when you remove the cooler. You're gonna have those four bolt holes right there, and that's what I was talking about, guys, back there. It's very difficult to access, but you guys can absolutely do it. You just gotta get creative. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and re remove the return line. Um, as you guys can see, there's little metal clips here that, that connects each injector. There's four of them. Go ahead and just use a little pick. Go ahead and just pry these out. Just be careful. A lot of these can actually just shoot out, and then you're gonna have a hard time trying to find it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those right now. So right now we're in the process of removing the injector lines. So with a 17 millimeter line wrench, what we're doing right now is we're going, we're just basically loosening all the injector lines. Uh, once we loosen them, we're gonna go ahead and just remove each, each and every one of them. We'll lay them out exactly where they're supposed to be on the table so we know exactly how to put them back on once we reassemble. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and remove the fan pulley here and then we're gonna remove the coolant bridge. Um, as you guys can see, we're gonna remove this first. It's gonna give us a little bit more access uh, to this little hose right here. Now you don't necessarily have to remove that, but it's gonna, if it's gonna give you a little more access, it's pretty simple to remove. We're gonna go ahead and just do it. This is where you're gonna remove it from on the end, all 14 millimeter. And then this Y coolant tube right here, there's gonna be two nuts, two bolts on this side as well as the other side. So next we're gonna go ahead and remove the glow plug module on the driver's side. Uh, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter uh, socket as well as a 13 millimeter or a 12 depending on your application. Um, now you're gonna have a 10 millimeter on, on this very far end right over here where my finger is, 10 millimeter here, one here, and then a 12 or 13, whichever preferred right here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that glow plug module. Hey guys, at this point, uh, the return line is out. The one crucial thing to look at is make sure that these ends are not snapped off in the injector. Um, if you can see that little rubber O-ring, uh, that's a good sign. Uh, when you can't, uh, that means it would be snapped off in the injector. Thing we found, we might get crucified for this, but one thing I found, uh, if they are broke off, is if you take a little tiny machine screw, don't be running it down into the top of the injector. You know, just do it by hand. Normally you can run it down in there, pull it out, and you can get the broken pieces out. One suggestion that I'd make if you're doing that, flip the injector upside down, spin it up in there, and then pull the piece out. 99% of the time you can get it out and it's gonna save you a $300 injector otherwise that you would have to purchase. The thing we're gonna do here is going to be your injector hold down bolts. You're gonna have four of them. These are gonna be your bolts all the way down across. They're gonna be a 12 millimeter socket is what you'd need to get them off. One thing you need to be careful about is these bolts snapping off and breaking. Very common on the LOI and newer trucks, especially if it's a truck from the northern you know, state where they're running salt and that sort of thing. They're very common for breaking off. So we're going to go kind of gentle. One thing I found, as stupid as this sounds, is using an impact. What we found is the impacting motion kind of hammers it and generally will get it to loosen up and come right off versus sitting there putzing with a ratchet trying to get it off and possibly break it. So. Um, we're going to go ahead, take these out right now, and uh, cross our fingers that they all come out. A good sign all the bolts did come out. Um, let's just confirm here. Yes. So all the bolts did come out. Um, none of them broke off, so that's a 
huge plus. Now, next thing we're gonna end up doing is we are going to go and pull out the actual injectors from the cylinder head. They make an actual polar tool for these injectors. However, I use a, a body clip pulling tool. The reason being why I can generally get underneath, hook it, pop them up. Um, the tool wastes a lot more time. Nine times out of 10, they'll come out. Now, if the injector's stuck in the bore, that's a different story. Then at that point in time, you would have to use the actual tool to get it out. So um, basically what we're gonna end up doing, we're gonna get underneath the hold down bracket here. Pop it out like so. Um, as you'll see, we got one injector out. Keep on going down through the rest of them here. These are the injectors out of the LOI, the head gasket truck that we're doing. Um, as far as, these are the coppers. Now we wanted to touch a little bit on this. I had said in the one video where we have issues with the injector actually sticking in the bore. Common cause and the reason being is 99% of the time that copper fails. When that copper fails, what's gonna happen is all the carbon's gonna come up through here. You're gonna start having issues where it's gonna seize in there. The other problem that you can start having is the compression is actually gonna come past this copper, come all the way up through and pop this O-ring right out. Seen that a lot of times on the install video, you're gonna see there's one certain area where we gotta make sure that the actual valve cover is really clean. Otherwise what ends up happening is when you stick that O-ring down in there, it's gonna rip that O-ring, tear it, and when it tears it, uh, like I say, you can now have debris and everything that gets down in there. First line we'll start with is this gonna be this guy right here. This line is going to come up. The connection over here on the driver's side is actually to the, from the line that comes up from the fuel tank, connects into there, we'll go through the whole line, come across here, and then go into your fickum. So we're gonna start with buzzing this line off here first. At this point, we're going to go ahead and remove this uh, fuel assembly, rail assembly. Basically, we're going to get around here. Down on the back side. Only line we're going to have left then is going to be the other one crossing to our rail. I'm gonna pull this J piece out of the Y bridge now. This will be one of the last pieces that we will have left before we actually start removing the Y bridge. Sometimes these things will really be carboned and seized up in there. So you may have to move it back and forth to get it kind of out. In some cases they do have tabs on there. You can go and kind of pry on there to get it to pop and release. And there we go, we got it out. Removing this coolant line, what we'll end up doing, you're gonna have a 12 mil here, 12 mil here, and then somebody's been in this motor, so they put just a normal hose clamp on there. Uh, normally they'll be those uh, quick connect, those quick squeeze ones from GM. So we'll get that slid out of there. End up going then, take that. That one's out. Let's bracket out of here. So as you guys can tell, it's always a good idea to clean the valley of the motor while you're in it. <laughs> More times than not, that's what you're going to see in there anyways. So Logan's going to go ahead and spend more time at cleaning the valley. <laughs> that is so nice. So now that we have it down to this point, we're going to go ahead and pull the valve cover. Now you don't have to remove both valve covers. As you can tell, it's a two-piece design here. You got one up here and you have one down here. Um, now you're going to go ahead and just start working on all of the bolts here. They're five millimeter. Okay, so now that we have it down to this point, we have both valve covers removed from the motor. Now what we're going to do is remove the rocker assembly. So the rocker assembly is held on by five 14 millimeter bolts. So in sequence, the best way to remove these is to go ahead and just crack this one first right here in the middle. And then do these two as well, crack, 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 
break that one loose and break that one loose now once you've done that guys it's important that you do two turns on each bolt so one two to back it off same here one two back off one two back off over here and over here now i know this is tedious guys but you got to continually do that um, because you don't want to just take these bolts off completely off the bat because you do not want to bend your rocker assembly that is the worst thing that you guys can do since you're already in it so just be patient with this one go ahead and just keep backing them off until eventually you can get this entire thing off So next what you're going to go ahead and do is remove the up pipe that's connected to the manifold because obviously when you remove the head the manifold is going to come with the head so you got to remove the up pipe bolts it's going to be a 12 millimeter 12 point socket go ahead and start removing those and then on the other side as well on the driver's side you want to do that the best way to do it on the driver's side is to get on the ground you're going to have a straight shot in order to remove those bolts if you were to sit right where the oil filter is the engine oil filter from the ground if you don't have a hoist so that's the best way to do that. So let's go ahead and start removing the up pipe bolts. At this point, we're gonna remove the head bolts. We're gonna start with the four Allens across the top here. Uh, they are six millimeter Allen you'll need socket. We like to use the long Allens to get down in there. Usually what we tell guys is you can go and put your Allen socket in there, crack it loose, and then use a ratchet to take them all the way out. Now next will be the main head bolts that are gonna hold the head down. There are 16 of them. They are a 17 millimeter 12 point socket that you will need. Uh, what we tell guys is to start in the middle. So you're gonna start with these two here, then work your way out, work your way out and keep on going and bouncing all the way out till you get out to the ends um, to evenly relieve the pressure off. At that point in time, once those are all out then, uh, we'll pull those bolts out and then we'll get ready to lift the head off. Back two then, uh, you're not gonna probably, well maybe you can see in these back two back here, you're gonna have to go and get with an actual ratchet. Uh, these will be the last two. Uh, usually uh, with the socket that we end up using, it's not a all the way deep well, but it's not a shallow either. It's kind of a mid length. Use that with like a one inch bump extension and the ratchet, generally you can get them off. Um, depending on what, you know, whose socket you're using uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, the one thing that we also stay is be careful. Uh, you don't want to hit the valve stem there uh, with the ratchet when coming across. You can hit it, bend it. At this point now, we'll go ahead and remove the bolts all out of there. We're going to lift the head out. Uh, the one thing that we do here uh, as a shop, we always work in a team. So generally it's always two guys setting heads. Now I get, I've had guys in the past before that have been able to set these heads by themselves. A um, couple of things you're going to fight around is a dipstick here. We keep the manifold to the head. So we'll pull the three up pipe bolts off the back side of the manifold and separate it there. Leave manifolds on both sides. Um, trying to get this off, like you say, Without the manifold, yeah, you could do it by yourself. Um, like I say, when we do it, we work in a team. One guy goes to the fender well, one guy up top. The big thing that we tell guys is watch your footing. Make sure you're not crushing wires. You know, watch your footing on the driver's side. Make sure you're kind of out of the way. Um, this is kind of the best way we found. We've done literally 
hundreds of head gasket jobs doing it this way, we've never had it be a problem. If you are doing this job by yourself, then instead of going and removing the three bolts at the back side of the manifold, uh, actually pull the manifold bolts out of the head so you can leave the manifold down. At that point in time, all you need to do is come up, grab the fuel rail here, and you'd be able to lift, roll the head back, and pull it out by yourself versus having to have a, have a buddy help you or whatever it may be. All right, guys, as you can see, the head is off. Uh, a couple things more. One thing I want to point out here. Um, you'll see this hole and this hole is kind of recessed down. There's actually dowels that go in here. Big thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure that these dowels either A, are still stuck in the block and or B, are stuck in the head. Um, when removing it, sometimes, you know, coolant's rushing out of the block and everything like that, running out of the head. You don't want to miss that or misplace those dowels. If you were to go and put that head back on without these dowels aligning that head, you're going to have real issues being that these are machined, uh, block to heads, everything like that. So one thing that I cannot stress enough, I stress it to the guys here at the shop, is make sure when we remove a head, we'll always say, yep, two dowels dolls got them you know or they have them or no they fell but i can see them uh because like i say you always want to make sure that you maintain where those dowels are and do not lose them the rear bolt on the driver's side down low now you see where josh is pointing there yep. that bolt there right there uh is going to need to be left in there you can get it loose you can get it all the way up but it will hit the firewall as you try to pull it out you're going to see when we go put the heads the remachined heads back on uh we're going to prep a stud a washer the nut on there um again we'll put this in the video when we go to put it back on there but you'll see we have to do that ahead of time otherwise you'll drop the heads on but you'll not physically be able to get the bolt in there or the stud or whatever you're doing so for what that's worth that is normal and that will hit you can leave it in there Don't forget too when you're removing the driver side head to disconnect this ground cable otherwise you're not going to make it far and it's going to start pulling on you um, it's going to be mounted right up here in the firewall 10 millimeter you'll go ahead it's just the stud here we'll take this off and slide it right on off shield. Be stuck on heat shield and lower bolt now we're starting the gasket. Got it. Got it. I got no dowels. I got both. All right. So at this point, guys, the heads are completely off, and then everything else is laid out in its perspective order where everything was removed, you know, the injectors. Um, you know on, on each end as you guys can see uh, driver side and passenger side so very well organized and laid out where it needs to be so now you get a vantage point of how all this is laid out here we're going to go ahead and talk about the gaskets really quick and why they're here in the shop as you can see here this was the passenger side head gasket there is actually a piece missing completely out of this gasket the gasket is actually broke down there as well as this is the driver's side, you can see the gasket is actually cracked right there. Um, it's still hanging on, but you can see it's actually cracked and half lifted up. The reason why that coolant tank was black, what was happening was the carbon was actually coming in from the actual cylinder, coming in through this crack and actually mixing in with the coolant while your coolant tank starts turning black. Um, so it's mixing in with the coolant, going to the top, separating, etc. Seeing that we can see this, these blown out in the gasket, this 100% confirms that these head gaskets are blown. Um, so we'll go ahead and replace these head gaskets with a Molly Grade C gasket, some ARP studs, and uh, start getting him back on his way. All right, so Logan that is working on the truck right here. He's gonna go ahead and explain to you the, the block prep. You guys can see he already started working on this side. But we left the passenger side for you guys. We're using a deck sander and we're starting with 80 grit sandpaper. And you wanna just take it and you wanna go horizontal with the block. You don't wanna go any up and down because that can cause bad ridges and it won't seal. You wanna just move up and down slowly all the way front to back. Just try to get off all the big rust ridges. Alright, so we just finished the 80 grit. Um, we're going to move on to the 180. But before that, you want to take a clean rag and some brake clean. Spray the brake clean on your rig and give the block a good wipe down just to get all the dust off from the 80 grit. For that, you can take your 180 with your uh, block sander 
and just do the same thing before horizontally, no vertical. Just give it a nice shine from the 80 grit. Okay, so at this point now you can kind of see the block. Um, he's got it decked down pretty much almost all the way. Uh, we still got to do a final clean uh, as far as wipe. Uh, we'll break clean on a really nice good clean rag, wipe all the excess off, and then take a little bit of light air pressure. The big thing you want to look for is you don't want any high spots. Um, so you can see like right here, I can see there must have been a couple high spots that were here. You want to try to get those all the way down and get this as smooth as possible. Um, you want that gasket to be able to sit flush right down on. Obviously any lift or any kind of imperfection in the gasket is going to cause problems. So um, at this point, looking at this block, um, everything looks pretty good. Uh, looks like he's got all the high spots down, so we'll do a final clean on it and uh, get ready to drop gaskets and then drop the heads down on. The thing then for checking for high spots that you can do um, is just kind of take your hand where you may have had a spot, like right here I can see there was a spot. You can just kind of take your finger rub across there. Everything feels smooth and looks good. Uh, so that way you know you got it knocked down and everything's flush and level. But this time we're going to go ahead and prep the other head here and this was already cleaned um, of course as you saw here earlier in the video Ryan said that it was pre-machined already um, now we're going to go ahead and have Logan explain to us the process from start to finish on this head right here how to put it all together and then after that we're going to go ahead and put it on the motor so the best way to start with prepping your heads is you're going to take a light bead of GMS and you want to go around the inside of the bolt hole if you go around the outside it's going to leak nice bead all along the inside Done. You can take it, flip around, and put it back on your head. These are all 12 mils. Take them. I kind of want to start them by hand so you can make sure that they all go in straight. All right, guys. So we just tighten down the bolts on the head for the intake runner. Next, we're going to take the fuel rail and tighten these down, screw them in by hand so they go in straight. It's a 12 mil like the rest, want to make sure they're pretty tight, you don't have to go crazy, but snug enough. Alright, so next we're going to drop down the manifold, got a new gasket set in place, line up the rest of the bolt holes. After that, uh, we got our glow plugs all prepped, you want to put a nice layer of anodizers around the threads just so they come out easier next time. When you're installing your head gaskets, the gaskets themselves, there's a left and a right. As you can see in here, there's the right. The right will go on the passenger side, and then the left, which we already have installed, will go on the driver's side. If you install them incorrect, your water jackets, the holes won't line up correctly, and it can cause overheating. Another thing to mention here is it says this side up, uh, right on the gasket, guys. So make sure you pay attention to that. So you guys remember when we removed the head on the driver's side? Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to remove once, you, once we remove that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just put a zip tie here only because we're going to keep it elevated to where right where the lower part of the block right here it's going to remain flush a lot easier because right when you set this head on the driver's side you're not going to be able to put this last stud in so just go ahead and pre-game it guys make sure that there's a zip tie here just keep it elevated so it's you know not not completely hitting the motor once you set it down but it's already ready to go see if you're a big boy that's how you carry a head right there with a beard <laughs> with a beard So again, it's a lot easier if you have a, another person assisting you as you install the head, just like when you removed it, since we have the extra hands. Now, if it's not, then fortunately, you're going to have to put that head in without the manifold if you're doing this by yourself. At this point, we are going to go and drop the passenger side head. Uh, basically what we're going to be wanting to do is we're going to want to line up the head uh, on the two dowels that we already have installed down in the block. As you can see the gasket is down there. Your dowel location is right here and then there's one on the back side by the up pipe. Um, it's kind of a two man job trying to fight it around the dipstick when the cab's on. If the cab were off we'd be able to go and easily just drop this head right down on by one person. Or if the exhaust manifold were off. In this case being that the cab's still down on here, I'm going to assist Logan. We're going to drop this thing down on there uh, to go around the dipstick and just kind of get it positioned down on there to set it down on the dowels. Dropped in the front? Dropped. Dropped in the rear? Yep. Perfect. 
So as you can see, the head's dropped down there. It's lined up in the dowels. Logan's going to go and put two head studs down in there. Uh, we're going to run them down, and then uh, we'll start putting all the rest down in there, putting our washers on, and get ready to torque the head. At this point, we're going to drop all the studs down in there. Uh, per the instructions, then, it says in there to run them down hand tight. So basically what you'll do is drop all the studs down in. Um, usually we like to start tuning the center like we did here just to make sure that everything's lined up and guided correctly. Um, and then at that point in time, you'll run it down with your ratchet uh, till they're hand tight, drop your washers on, and then your nuts. One thing to note here, too, is do not forget the small ones across the top side. You'll have four of them. Uh, don't forget to put those ones in. Uh, those, again, you're going to run down hand tight as well. Um, but those are going to be torqued uh, a little bit differently. You're not going to go uh, to full max torque spec like you will in the stud. Uh, the tops are only 25 foot pounds. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and drop all the washers down on and get ready to put the nuts on then after. We're going to be ready to start torquing these heads. What we like to do is run the nuts down uh, until they bottom out, just using a smaller ratchet. We do run these down even though we're not actually physically torquing anything with a torque wrench yet in the sequence. So we'll start one, two, three, four, five, six, and go all the way out and just keep walking our way all the way out. Um, once we get them all down to where they stop with the ratchet, then we'll actually get a torque wrench out and start running them. ARP says to go 125, just straight across. We like to go and start and do 60, 90, and 125. Also to note, if you were not running ARP studs and you were going with factory head bolts, there is actually a foot-pounds and then a torque angle that you would put it down to. Although I don't recommend putting factory head bolts back in and obviously putting in studs, if you were to do that, please be aware this rule would not attain to you uh, using factory head bolts. At this point, uh, Logan is going to start using the torque wrench to torque down the actual head. Right now, uh, we're just on our 60 foot-pound series, uh, so we're going to go 60 degrees um, on all these studs. Then we will come back, um, do 90, and then we'll do 125. All right, at this point, Logan is at the 90 foot-pound mark, so he's running through currently right now, um, going through all the rest of them here uh, to get these torqued down, and then after this, we'll go to 125. All right, guys, so as Logan is doing that right now, obviously he's going to the 90 foot-pounds. What I want you guys to do right now, if you're in your garage or you guys just are trying to figure this out, go ahead and screenshot that right now on your cell phone or whatever you have. Take a picture of it. That way you guys understand the torque sequence is what he's doing right now. It's kind of tedious to go over every single bolt and show, you know. So you guys see it right there? That's exactly what he's looking at. So he's going through his second round right now. Once he's done, he's going to go ahead and hit it back up in, within the same sequence at the 125 foot-pounds. So he's going to continue to plug away on that. All right, guys, at this point, uh, Logan is doing the 125 torque spec. This will be the final torque at this point. The studs are torqued to 125. However, the M8s are torqued to 25 foot-pounds. Um, no more than that. So we're going to go ahead and run those down, torque them, and uh, this head will be torqued on and uh, ready for valve train. We are ready to start putting the rocker arm assembly on, push rods, and the bridges. One thing that you want to note, when we go to put these bridges on, you're going to see here, there's uh, two different ways that these go. You see that there's a bump out there, and then there's a flat on this side. 
Um, the one thing that we always tell guys is make sure, pay attention to what you do. If you actually go and put the bump inwards towards the injector, um, when you go to try to drop the valve cover on, it's not gonna actually drop on. You're gonna have to take the whole valve train back out and rerun the valve train all over again. So Logan's gonna go ahead and start dropping the bridges on. All right, we're now gonna put the push rods in, but what you wanna do is kinda of take those push rods, uh, you'll put them down into the hole, and then basically you just wanna kinda of give it a little push. It's hard to describe over camera, but what you wanna do is you'll just kinda of feel it kinda of drop into place. This is gonna be more of a kind of an experience thing and a feel thing, um, but we can go ahead and start putting the push rods in. Also too, I will note, there's really no direction as far as technically you don't have to keep each push rod to each cylinder. Um, some guys will mix match or whatever. We do still, just as a good practice, keep them in line. Take a little bit of oil, squirt them in the push rods. Um, we did uh, go and uh, pray clean um, everything out uh, when we had it apart. Inside this motor was a little dirty, so we just want to get everything as clean as we can. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on there just as uh, good practice. We are going to now drop the rocker shaft arm assembly down in there. One thing that you gotta do is basically make sure your two dowels are in the head. Some guys, when they like transfer heads or you know take them to the machine shop and the machine shop strips them down, guys before in the past have said, oh, I forgot the dowels. That keeps everything aligned, so make sure that is there. Generally what you wanna do is just start this finger loose. Make sure all the actual push rods are lined up. Start torquing from the center and work your way all the way out, and we'll go over that in a minute. The bolts ran down snug. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque the rocker arm shaft assembly. Uh, it's gonna be 30 foot pounds is what you're gonna to need to torque spec. Again, you're gonna start at the center and work your way out to each end. Uh, similar to the head studs, how we kind of did that. So you'll go ahead, we'll watch Logan here get these torqued. We're gonna get ready to run the valves. One thing I wanted to point out, uh, there's actually a pretty cool uh, sheet that you can actually print off a Merchant Automotive's website. This actually tells you how to adjust the valves. If you go onto their website, it's actually on there, it'll tell you. We're gonna explain a little bit more once we get into there, and then actually start showing you guys on the motor how to do it. But I just wanted to start here and kind of show you, uh, if you log on a Merchant's site, really good information there uh, to help you guys and assist. This is what some guys consider the hardest part of the job. So definitely make sure you check out their website. We've got everything ready to go with the valve train. Next thing we need to do is get the balancer lined up to the timing marks. You'll see right here, there's going to be a timing mark here on the actual front of the cover, and then there's going to be one on the balancer. You wanna get this rolled up and get these two marks lined up, and then see where you're at on the motor. We've got the balancer where we need to be. Uh, cylinder number one, both these valves are going to be, the push rods are going to be loose. Um, reading through the instructions, it's going to tell you how to get this lined up and how to get everything set. When you look on here, you're going to have red and yellow boxes. Um, you're going to have the intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. Prime example, cylinder number one, it says intake. We're going to go ahead and adjust this. To adjust this, you're going to need a flat blade screwdriver and a 14 millimeter wrench. What you're going to do is crack your jam nut loose. Take your 12 thousandths feeler gauge, stick it in between the bridge and the rocker arm, put your flat blade screwdriver on there, and you're gonna want a little bit of drag on there. Um, what I like to do is set them just maybe a touch hot. That way, once we rotate the motor over, they're gonna have you rotate the motor 10 revolutions. Um, when you come back, they're generally spot on and tight, but you're gonna be looking for just a little bit of drag. That's got the drag, we'll move on to the next. Now we're gonna move on to exhaust. You'll see I can't stick the fueler gauge in there. So we'll loosen.
tighten it down. Got some drag. Go to cylinder number three on the intake. Now on the chart, we did the first three in red. The next one coming back is gonna be, it shows cylinder number three, the exhaust. We're gonna skip that one. Uh, we'll do that on the next revolution. So now we're gonna go to cylinder number five on the intake. So you can see once I have the fueler gauge in here and it's where I want it, make sure you tighten that jam nut. You're gonna wanna put it pretty tight. Even though we're gonna be going back over it again, crank it down tight. Um, I'm sure there's a torque spec. The problem is, is if you're trying to put a torque wrench on here, that means your flat blade screwdriver is gonna be out of here and then you're gonna, the adjustment nut's gonna be moving just a little bit. So I like to hold the screwdriver uh, in one hand, the wrench in the other to crank down. We got the first revolution, or the first 360 done. Um, Logan's gonna finish up that side. For the chart, as you can see, I got my side done. Logan's over here doing his side. Uh, he's gonna do the his only. He's only got three cylinders in red. He's gonna adjust those ones. Once we're done, we'll turn in another 360 revolution and go back through. He'll do his yellows, and I'll do the red, uh, yellows on my side. Now we're gonna go and rotate the motor 360 degrees. One thing to note out. When you drop your valve train in and you got your push rods in and everything's torqued and you're going to start adjusting valves, if something doesn't feel like it's going right or you get a hard spot, stop. You don't want to push a bend a push rod. Um, that would tell me you don't have a push rod seated down in uh, correctly and you need to stop, take stuff back apart and look and see what you got going on. As you can see, Logan's got it lined up here now. Um, so these valves, as you can see, cylinder number one, the valves are tight. Cylinder number four valves on Logan's side should be loose. And uh, we're gonna start adjusting these uh, the yellow boxes now. One thing to point out too, guys, if you're taking your motor apart, if you're taking your engine apart for head gaskets or whatever it may be, always really good practice to always adjust your valves no matter what. Um, I've had guys in the past tell me before, oh, I don't need to adjust the valves. They didn't machine the head. We just, we put a different gasket in. I even put the same thickness gasket in. I don't care what you're doing, if you're pulling the valve train out, always readjust the valves. I, you don't know how many times I've heard that's come back to bite guys hard before, so I cannot stress enough. If you're lifting that valve train out, take the hour it may take you by yourself doing it to adjust these valves and make sure you have everything correctly adjusted. That can be detrimental to the motor. It will blow up if you don't have them adjusted properly and they're that far out of spec. Um, especially if you're taking your heads to the machine shop um, and actually having the heads milled. Um, GM specs, I know GM says you don't need to go and adjust them depending on, you know, with their straight edge and the feeler gauges. Just a safe practice. We always take them in the machine shop, have them milled, pressure checked, the whole nine yards. Uh, Logan and I just finished up doing the yellow boxes, adjusting all the valves in yellow. So we're going to rotate this motor over 10 times, come back, recheck the valves one more time. If they did go out of adjustment, we'll adjust them at that point and then we can drop the valve covers. All right, we just turned the motor over, 10 revolutions. At this point now, we are going to go and double check all the valves that we just adjusted. Now that everything's seated, make sure everything's still in adjustment. If there are valves that would need to be adjusted at this point in time, we'll go ahead and do them.
this point we are going to go and install the valve covers. You'll see here we have new valve cover gaskets that come in the kits. Always make sure you put a new valve cover gasket on. Very crucial. We also have the dowels installed uh, on both sides so that we have no problems with alignment. All right, next Logan's got the Y bridge ready and we are gonna drop it in for install. One good habit too guys, start with the bottom nuts, tighten those first or bring them down to almost tight before you try to force the bolts in at the top side. All right, so we got the Y bridge in. At this point now, we're gonna get ready to put our fuel lines in. Our coolant line is already in place. The reason we put it in place is because we have to put another line assembly down here. So we put the coolant line in first. We just kind of leave it off to the side uh, so we can drop the fuel line uh, assembly down in there. Next fuel line to get installed is going to be your fuel crossover from rail to rail. The next fuel line we're gonna install is going to be the high pressure line from the CP3 to the driver's side rail. Next line that's going to get installed is going to be the main fuel line. This line is going to come from the main line assembly that comes along the rail and goes up to your FICM on the passenger side. We are ready to start installing injectors. Uh, I'm gonna show you kind of a tip to prepping these injectors. Um, first thing, always make sure you're using a new copper and O-ring. You're gonna put your O-ring on, slide it on up into the groove, and you're gonna put your copper on. These coppers slide on kind of hard. Um, what we normally do is clean the carbon out the best we can out of there. And then what we end up doing is we push the copper on as far as we can. And I actually found that a quarter inch 10 mil socket, if you put it on there and evenly push, it'll pop right on and seal all the way around. So just a tip, we're gonna go ahead and start putting the injectors in. We are gonna get ready to put the in fuel injectors back in. We've already got a couple injectors in. Uh, we're gonna show you guys how to put the last one in here. Uh, basically put some lube around the O-ring, whether it's oil, a little bit of assembly grease, something of that nature, um, just to help the O-ring slide down into the bore and everything like that. Copper's already installed. Uh, the bore on the cylinder head's all cleaned out as, long as, as well as the valve cover. So Logan's gonna go ahead and put this injector in. Again, this is kind of a by feel thing. You'll feel the injector bottom out uh, into the actual head. Do keep in mind, the torque on these bolts is 22 foot pounds. Do not go any harder than 22 foot pounds. We are going to install the return line. When you push down, basically you'll hear them click just like that and it'll lock in and you'll be good to go. As you can see, we got a couple of the high pressure lines on here. Um, one good practice uh, when disassembling, make sure you lay these out in order. Hopefully you guys did. Um, we're just gonna go ahead, pretty self-explanatory, just putting the line back on there. Um, basically just thread it on and you'll be good to go. One thing too that I do stress is make sure you tight these, make these very tight. You don't want them to leak fuel all over the place or have an issue down the road with cranking. Logan is prepping the front of the motor now, putting new gaskets in for the coolant crossover. You're going to have a gasket here and a gasket over there as well. Uh, again, always really good practice to make sure you go and replace those gaskets. Also, another big thing, make sure this har harness is routed correctly. Normally what we end up doing is we kind of tuck it underneath the head gasket. Put this harness anywhere else, you're gonna end up pinching the harness, which can create problems down the road. This harness is uh, responsible for your engine oil, whole engine oil in the oil pan. Had that happen once with a customer, he was doing some work on his truck. What ended up happening, he didn't realize that he had pinched it and started the truck and had a low oil pressure. Uh, brought the truck into us, long story short, the wires were pinched. So, simple mistake, cost him kind of some labor time and that sort of thing. We're now going to put on the coolant crossover in the front. As you can see, Logan has some grease on the O-ring on the water pump. Good practice to do this. A lot of times that O-ring likes to move around. So we always like to go and put a little bit of grease on there. So just to kind of hold the gasket in place while you set this down. Another thing I want to point out as he's putting this on, make sure this bracket is flipped up. Uh, what can happen is that bracket will go forward and then when you try to put it up into the thermostat housing here, it's not there. Uh, it will be tucked down that point in time, now you gotta go take it back off and flip it back up. It's up in place. The last thing he'll have to do is put that rubber, over, uh, rubber onto the actual coolant pipe there. Tighten those bolts down over there. You'll have your four on each head. He'll be moving forward.
Is at this point, you can see we have the EGR cooler logged back in. Um, all the EGR emissions is back on. At this point now, the next thing we're going to need to do is flip the main engine harness back over, uh, start hooking up all the sensors uh, and all the electrical. Logan's got the harness all back on. We also did the upper thermostat uh, housing pipe as well at the same time. If you remember, that hose was actually bad when we took it off. We got that hose all replaced. Um, at this point now, we're going to button up the front, get our fan shroud back on with our fan, uh, get our AC compressor flipped back over, uh, get our charge pipes back on, and get ready to start this truck. Guys, so Logan has buttoned up everything here and he's gonna go ahead and fill the coolant and we're gonna go ahead and prime the fuel system and get her fired up for the first time. As you can see, everything is completely put back together. So what we went ahead and did is just simply go ahead and add, it's gonna be about three to four, maybe three and a half gallons or so. But really what you wanna do is you just wanna focus on that full line. You'll see the full line right there. Uh, go ahead and fill it up to that full line right there. And then the next thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is to bleed the air out of the system. It's pretty simple, guys. You're going to basically just loosen this bolt right here. And then once you start seeing as you're filling, this, the air just eventually start to purge out of the system. And you're going to start seeing the coolant start to spill out of there. At that point right there, you've properly bled it. Go ahead and screw that down. You guys saw here earlier in the video, we disconnected the return and supply line. So... Obviously, there's going to be a lot of air in the field. You're, you're going to be cranking constantly if you guys don't do this process right here. There's a bleeder screw, guys, on this fuel filter housing. And there's, it's a little plastic bleeder screw. You, can, you guys can either use like a 13 millimeter socket, which I prefer because it's plastic, or you guys can use a flathead screwdriver. Um, but essentially what you're going to go ahead and do is just prime this ball, or this fuel primer right here, and just keep priming and priming until it gets super hard. Obviously, you're going to leave the bleeder screw loosened at that point. Once you guys start seeing fuel seeping out of that, you just kind of want to keep pushing down until there's absolutely no air bubbles coming out of there. And at that point, guys, go ahead and tighten it. Give it a few more pumps until it gets super hard. And then go ahead and cycle that key a few times. And then we'll go ahead and fire up that motor. All right, so uh, Logan, he's going to do the honors since he was the guy that rightfully did the head stud job pretty much himself. Well, Ryan and I narrated. So now that the truck is running, you're gonna simply just check for leaks, of course. Make sure everything's good to go. Let it run a little bit. Of course, take it on a test drive. Once you come back, check out, check all the fluids. Check the uh, coolant level, check the oil level. Just check absolutely everything before you call it a day. Thank so you. you did take it on a test drive. How did everything work and what were you looking for? And good, drove down the road good. Uh, watch balance rates for injectors, brought it back, top coolant, and checked for any pressure anywhere, and there was no pressure anywhere. Cool. Awesome. So everything checked out? Everything was good to go? Everything was good. All right, man. Good job, and I do appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. You guys see I've been doing a lot of videos here around Ryan's Diesel Service and Kodiak Truck here in Wisconsin, and I'm going to continue to post some really awesome, informative videos for you. Hey, by the way, make sure you check out Ryan. He makes some amazing remanufactured turbos. Probably the best on the market, I would say, and I, I definitely truly mean that because I definitely run one. And if you guys are interested in buying something off his website, we're talking remanufactured turbos. Make sure you use my coupon code. It's going to be Truckmaster. It's definitely going to save you guys some money. So other than that, guys, make sure you stay tuned for some more awesome content. I'm going to go ahead and get back to work here. We'll see you on the next video. Take care. I don't know. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs>